All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to week four in November 2019 for Hawkeye Pro Wrestling. And week four means that it is officially a pay-per-view week here. Uh, we will be doing Adrenaline and Breakout, and then at the end of the week, we will be doing Revolution uh, let me see here. I believe we already have a few matches that we have already uh, settled in on. In fact, m looks like most of it we've kind of settled in on right now. Uh, that, of course, being Dash Chisako versus Miyu Yamashita. Of course, uh, Miyu was unmasked, uh, I think it was last month at the last pay-per-view. <clears throat> or it was a few weeks ago, but now she gets a one-on-one -on -one match against Dash as uh, Dash has been looking for revenge over the Heyman hit squad, and she'll get it at Revolution, at least against one of them. And then we have Alex Reynolds versus Naruki Doi. And uh, Doi was kind of the guy who uh, debuted last month and was a, a bit of a, a pain in the side for uh, Alex Reynolds. Help cost Alex Reynolds the uh, championship and help... Uh, Shane Hollister retain and uh, Alex Reynolds looking at for his revenge on Naruki Doi. We'll be going over this more probably. Um, uh, well, I mean, we'll have the we'll have the cards up again. Uh, you know, once we get through the the week stuff here, uh, then I believe it was just announced last week. Uh, number one contendership to the women's title: Kana versus Leva Bates. It seems like Leva is uh, physically able to compete, and she will have that. And then, of course, the main event of Shane Hollister versus Akira Tozawa for the Hawkeye Pro Heavyweight Championship. And that is where we currently sit, as well as, of course, Tetsuya Naito being set to appear as well. That was something that was uh, brought up as well. I feel like I need to see... Oh... Oh, yeah, that that picture of Scarlett Bordeaux, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know what I'll, <laughs> I, just, I don't even know what to say about that, um, other than I'm, I, I, there's not, there's nothing I can really, really say. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, yeah, I have no idea why you're so mad, other than the idea that perhaps Scarlett beat Sue. That might be why. Did that happen? Is that why you're mad or <laughs> why? Um, we should get to adrenaline though. I don't think there's anybody here. So I think we just go in here. Good for you. <laughs> oh, that sucks, don't it? <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. What do we got? Trent is relocated to the Great Lakes. Okay. A lot of people are just kind of pissy in general. Especially the people in my chat. I don't have Gachi. I don't. So I don't. I don't know. Am I creating a dojo? Um, <clears throat> I've been thinking about it. I think the I. I think what I'll probably do actually is um, I'll wait till the end of the year. So I'll open it up right at the beginning of the year. So that's just a thing that we can look forward to is uh, fresh recruits coming out each year after that. Displaced Ola, Ola, Ola Cranon Fracture. Shit. 53 days with a fracture. Okada is out. Speedstar. Oh my god. Upper thoracic spinal cord rupture. That sounds fucking awful. Oh. Oh, he might be done. Oh, that's his second back. 
That's his second back injury. Hey, Jack, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, dude, he's he's done. That that'll probably that'll probably be that'll probably be it for Speedstar. That'll probably be it for his for his uh for his career in this. Spinal cord rupture after already having a spinal disalignment a year and a half ago. Damn. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, damn. He's loyal to Dragon Gate. Otherwise, I'd be so fucking on getting Yamato. I wonder if I wonder if I throw enough money at him, he'd be willing to. I don't know. Does that work? I want to see if that works. If I can literally throw enough money at Yamato to get him to like say fuck his loyalty. Wow. All right. Let me let me see this just for just for shits and giggles. Yep. Loyalty trumps everything and I can't get Yamato. Damn. <sighs> Let me see. Any God damn everyone's injured. Kai Rey Mysterio's heading for an injury. Hayato Jr. Fujita sideline. Kaz Hayashi sidelined. Are injured. Ricochet is hurt with chronic lower back pain. I'm sure he's just working through that, right? Yeah. Jesus. Jay Briscoe's about to get hit. Uh, T Hawk looks like he's about re probably ready. Oh, Scott Dawson. That could have been someone I grabbed. Probably wouldn't have meant too much, though. Yep. All right. Cody Hall wants a pay raise. Good chunk pay raise, but you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to him because I think he's probably it's probably uh, been a big popularity boost for him. Yeah. Well, not that big, but let me see. I just paid him seven thousand. How much is he worth? Eighty four hundred. OK, so, yeah, that's a bit of a steal. I wonder how much, you know, like, uh, let's see, like, Dash would cost us $20,000. i am paying her fourteen. I'm paying her twenty seven. She's worth thirty three. How much is Tomatonga worth to me? Forty three five. I'm paying thirty eight five. Jesus. I felt like, I felt that would happen. Uh, Hearn Center. Hang on one sec. Getting something to drink before stay hydrated bot tells me. Mostly because I'm already like kinda tired. <laughs> I had to get up early. Earlier than I'd wanted to today. Which is of course when the sun was still up. <laughs> uh let's see. Tomatonga. He turned up very late. Let's give him a stern warning. Nothing noteworthy. Like, hey, fucker, don't do that. Helmsy the Creator and Mick Foley. Oh, no. Helmsy the Creator was brought before wrestler's court, accused of annoying everyone else with his constant boasting and cocky attitude. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Mick Foley found him guilty in silence and sentenced him to remain silent for the rest of the night and buy drinks, everyone. <laughs> It's Triple H, yeah, exactly. What do you expect? It's Triple H. His constant boasting and his cocky attitude, and Mick Foley's just <laughs> telling him to shut the hell up. That's amazing. By the way, where the hell is this? Uh, M.O. Hearn Center in Columbia, Missouri. It's probably a... Uh, 13th. It's probably like a 
like a University of Missouri, something like that, basketball arena. Let's see. All right. So we're on the show. Now we need our go home show to adrenaline. All right. I'm just trying to see what all we have going on here. We have the Pete Dunn thing on there. Yeah, I think he did that on purpose, the Yosuke being on there twice because of how much he fucking loves Yosuke Santa Maria. Uh, there's a lot of people I think I could probably use here. He was absolutely waiting for you to, to mention that there was, <laughs> there was two Yosuke Santa Marias. That's a lot of people. Um, let's see. Someone who's recognizable. No one. Okay. Someone who's a regional star. We have Charlie Haas and Arch. Wait, what? The fuck? How? Is there two Ron Killings in here, or did he already get, like, shit canned? I think there's two Ron Killings. Oh, god damn it. No, we'll. <laughs> There could be there could be a Ron Killings in another in another promotion, and then there can be Ron Kill. We can go back to Ghostface Killings existing. Uh, I feel like Charlie Haas is is good for a uh, bring somebody in. In fact, I think we're going to do that. Let's uh, sign Charlie Haas for a night because we're gonna do what we've been doing. <laughs> And that is, of course, Prince. Oh, do I need to? Yeah, I need to sign him as a. Da, 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 Charlie Haas. Whoops. Let's just do occasional wrestler. Where would you put him? Lower mid card. Well, that's could have been worse. He's not too bad. Yeah, he should he should do perfectly fine. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 evil just nonchalantly eddied Tanga. What? <laughs> oh, it was the Oh, the thing must be going on. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this without actually watching that shit. Cause it it it's gonna it's gonna increase the amount of time spent doing this by a while. Because that's what happened last week. <laughs> um, where are you at? There you are. <clears throat> there we go. Devitt versus Charlie Haas. In fact, they could probably go pretty okay. Psychology is a 73, but everything else is uh, pretty good. Uh, let's go 14. How about that? I was sitting here thinking like, eh, but yeah, we'll go 14. If I remember right, Devitt should be still kind of okay in stamina. He's dropping, but I think we'll still be okay. God, he was so good a year ago. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't great, but he was pretty damn good. Now it's meh. On the bright side, like his consistency in selling is dropping, but safety, psychology, basics, you don't really lose that. Physically, he's just deteriorating in front of us. Ugh. I don't know what was going on. It felt like something in my ear. It's all right. All right. Devitt versus Haas. 
Devitt be the victor. Um, nah, we won't open it up. Decisive win, though, and we'll make it a submission finish. MMA hybrid rules. That's not uh, that's not the brackets I usually use. There we go. All right. So Charlie Haas, I think, might be one of the best guys uh, we've had him face thus far. <laughs> I think compared to compared to some of the other guys he's been having these uh, these these matches with. Let me see what he's got. Champa. Ken Carson and Jarrell Clark. I'd say that's pretty good. <laughs> Exit without saving. So we've already got that set up. Um, now I could do the WWE thing and do another tag, but I think what I'll probably do, actually, we'll give him a one-on-one -on -one match because we haven't seen him in a while. So we'll do Shibata. Oh man, who should he be facing? Mm. Don Devitt Rude, Sammy. But they're kind of in the middle of doing something. I don't want to rehash Joe. A lot of these other guys are in their own stuff here. Kingston's kind of also... It's either probably going to either be like Sammy or Kingston. Because, like, they'll have a... They'll, they're going to have an angle, but... I'm trying to think about someone who might not be doing... is All right, so... Yeah, receipt device are supposed to be rustling. But you know what? I might... Because I did that last time. Yeah, let's maybe we'll do Shibata versus Beretta, and we'll see how well Beretta does. So we'll have, yeah, I'm 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 gonna nix doing Joe Shibata again. I feel like I'll I feel like I could probably do that again at some point. Just maybe not right this second. Because, yeah, they had, you know, Joe Shibata, Joe Shib or no, Joe Shibata somewhere. Let me see. Yeah, we've had, we've had a few of them. We did have the six man. And I think we've had technically our three matches between them in six months. So, like, I'll just show you this real quick before I get too far into it. Even if I wanted to do Shibata versus Joe, it's going to tell me I've done this match too much. Or it won't. But I'm still going to do Beretta. I'm sorry. I still... I don't want to... I don't want to do Shibata versus Joe, like, again, right this second. Joe will have a different match. I'll have him... I'll have him murder somebody. Hey, Turtle, how's it going? I'll have him murder somebody else. Uh, let's see, Psych Stam. Okay, um, let's do let's do seventeen. Shibata wins. <clears throat> we'll do an open match. Give Beretta a little bit to do. Uh, slow build, decisive win, and I think we're good. In fact, we can probably call this one in the ring. <clears throat> There we go. And then, um, yeah, Joe, Joe versus somebody. Let's see, Joe, maybe a lower tier guy, like a Will Ospreay. <laughs> uh,. He's still doing all right. He's kept his momentum for the last couple months, so that's or from back in the spring. I don't know. I feel like there's there's some. I feel like there's some. Uh, 
There's some fun in watching uh, Joe murder Osprey. Winds rising? I don't know. That's I. I always just kind of say that I don't know. Just whenever we get, whenever I get to it, I don't really have a set schedule for that. Psych is a little low, but wasn't Joe's stamina pretty good? I wonder if we should give them a little bit of time. We'll give them like 20 minutes and Mick Foley's uh, guidance. So it's a little less than murder, but uh, yeah. Um, What is the popularity difference here? Okay. High 60s, low 70s, and he's what? Mid 50s. Yeah, so this this will probably help Will Ospreay out more than anything. So we'll open up the match and slow build it, and then we'll do a decisive submission finish. A lot of submission finishes today. And then maybe we'll do... I'm trying to see what else there is right now. Let's see. Do that. That. Okay. Let's us do... We'll do a tag team. Yeah. I, I do... Mostly because I do want to get an eye on uh, who's... Who's pretty good. Juice... Juice could use a little bit of momentum. Prime membership reminded you of something. Oh, no. How much has Devitt regressed? Uh, quite a bit. <laughs> you could use to. <laughs> well, thank you for, for plugging the fact that I don't, I don't even plug myself. <laughs> so let's do Juice and Matt Cage. Maybe. What's Alpha sitting at? Alpha sitting pretty high up too. Hmm. And Cody Hall's sitting decent as well. Let's see. I want to do that and then the day one guys. And I'm just trying to think who I could do that with. Let's do. Robert Rude. <sighs> should it be Cole or should it be here? Okay, Cole Hero Hawkeye. Um, all right, who's got some of the best momentum here? I think they all kind of got momentum, so we'll just put Rude and Hero in there. <clears throat> How much time have we used? 57 minutes. So this doesn't have to be a, a great. This doesn't have to be a long match. In fact, I won't. I'll make this like a twelve-minute sprint. That'll be how I do it. Uh, I guess. I guess Suzuki is going right now. Um. Mm. <sighs> you know what? Let's get let's get Matt Cage in there to win this. He'll roll this up, I think. So, open match. Um, should they go all out? Why not? And then we'll do a decisive win, but it's a flash pinfall. So he's not really cheating as much as he is, like, just out-wrestling them. That's probably a good one. There we go. Boy, what will be our main event out of all this? I'd say Shibata Beretta. And we'll do Joe Osprey to start. Oh, man. Suzuki versus Jay White just sounds not good. <laughs> Big Ben loses the belts of Big R just ate a cartload of super finishes. Oh, so there's, there's Dragon Gate and New Japan going on, and I'm just trying to get this done in a... In a in a goddamn timely fashion. All right. All right, Samoa Joe. Entertainment. Because why not give Joe a live mic? 
We're going to take the script off him, too. He refuses to follow the script. Joe grabs the mic pre-match. And is pissed. He's been... Forgotten about in the... Heavyweight title picture. Ah. In the heavyweight title picture. There we go. Pipe bomb from Joe is damn right. Four minutes. He's not happy. He hasn't been around in a while. Title scene. Yeah, that'd be. So, Samoa Joe. Entertainment. In fact, I'm going to do success because if he's cutting a promo afterwards and like, yeah, fuck y'all. Joe puts Shane and Akira on notice that he will get his again. Three minutes makes his makes his uh, remark. Here we go. <laughs> In fact, I think I might try to blend this into just about everything right now. So if we do like Prince Devitt, Bob Sap. And Samoa Joe. <laughs> I feel like this could work. What's his his menace is not as good as his entertainment. All right. Uh, maybe I should use his overness. That might be helpful. Oh, he's Misu and Knife Pervert, Minoru Suzuki and Jay White. Yeah, just as soon as I said it. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, Actually, we saw Kevin the name James White K here, not knowing why he's blocked. What? <laughs> uh, you know what? I won't rate it on anything because this is this is the uh, this is the. This is the Devitt show at this point. Devitt out with Sap. <laughs> Let's see. Talks himself up as Joe leaves for the back. They lock eyes. Step steps in, just in front, like not really a not really a big thing right there, but enough enough to where Devitt Devitt looks like he's gonna start kicking somebody. Devitt's I'm imagining Joe just Joe just had that match against Osprey. It's probably one of it's the longest match of the night, but he comes out and he and he has that. And he's just talking shit. And then Joe is just staring down Devitt. And Devitt's just trying to look like he's not trying, like, shitting his pants. And then Sap steps in. <clears throat> um, let's see here. I do actually. Hang on. I might actually pencil in Joe versus Devitt for something at the pay per view. Just a just a just a bonus match, like you said. I think that's what I'll actually maybe do something with that. So Devitt versus Haas. We have that Prince Devitt, and then Bob Sapp, and hmm. Hmm. 
So, actually, let's do this. I'm going to do Davey Richards coming out once again with Eddie Edwards this time. There we go. All right. So, Sap raises Devitt's hand. Davey out. Wants a match. Devitt says he'll need fight camp first. He can't he can't just fight on on like so so the idea is that he he does give Davey Richards his match. <laughs> The idea is he does give Davey Richards his match. However, uh, he needs a full fight camp first, so he's gonna he's gonna take a few minutes. He's gonna take a just a few weeks and uh, get something ready for. Oh, I don't know. We got we got a couple of weeks now. You know, uh, let's see. Maybe a, maybe a quick camp gets him two and a half weeks. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Juice, Matt Cage, uh, we can do that, let's do, um, actually, I think I'm going to do Adam Cole in with Brother Ray, Cole is in Ray's office. Ray wants him to sit for this next match to keep from interfering. There we go. Just like uh, yeah, three minutes, we'll say. That's still quite a long time, but... Uh... Du, 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 du. I think yeah I think you know what we'll do minor we'll do minor so we can do down to like two minutes with that so we'll have that sitting in there and then <clears throat> let's do brother Ray Adam Cole so he'll do entertainment he'll do entertainment yeah that, that should work <clears throat> oh boy. Ray on screen reconsidered a match and we'll have that the revolt versus day one at whoops. Infamous in oh man I don't know if I have enough space for this let's see prisoners of ah I'm gonna I'm gonna make this happen at how about this Doi Darts holiday special in prisoners of war match there we go. <clears throat> So I've, I've kind of mentioned it before, my idea for how this match would work is essentially like Hell in a Cell meets Survivor Series. <clears throat> so obviously with Adam Cole in his, uh, in his office there, he's got he's to gotta deal with that. And then Shibata versus Beretta. Oh, we got to have a storytelling match. I guess this is going to be the storytelling match because I think it's the best we've kind of got right this second. Uh, let me see. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I need something instead of... Shibata, like it, I'm trying to think of like a Shibata. Um, actually, you know what? I've got an idea for this. P 
Pete Dunn. <clears throat> there we go. Dunn out to commentary. Cuts a promo on stage about Shibata keeping him from being champ. There we go. Just like three minutes there. And then we could have this one actually be Styles, Michaels, and Dunn, which is probably going to be crap, but we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Here we go. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know if I want to do a run in afterwards. I'm trying to think here. So I'm trying to think about how I want to end the show. This is the thing. is like this is I don't know if I want to do in the ring or outside of the ring for the last bit. Actually, I think I think I'll do something. Let's do Pete Dunne. Let's see. Katsuyori Shibata. And we'll do uh selling maybe? Wow, is he done already? Feels like it feels like he was not in the ring very long. Cause I'm I'm just looking at I'm just like looking this up right now. This was not very long. This was not long ago. <laughs> Here we go. Um maybe I should almost use his uh popularity, but I won't. Uh, yeah, so I'd say like minor success and better success. Dunn has the opportunity trophy. Looks to attack Shibata. Whoops. But he notices Dunn slides out of the ring. Wait, Dunn leaves. Shibata. Eggs on. Basically, he's telling him, come on. Come on. <laughs> Death blow, elbow, J, fall back, got stop, power driver, damn. Uh, four minutes on that, I'd say. And I'm trying to think, because I want to have that one lasting bit. Oh, I've got an idea. This will be, uh, be interesting. So let's do Shane Hollister. Let's do Alex Reynolds. Akira Tozawa. And Naruki Doi. This is how we'll end it. Um, let me see. Uh, who in their character? Actually, okay. Shane beat up by whoops Doi and Akira Alex notices and walks away but runs in to fend them off <clears throat> I think that might be that might be an interesting one. Shane Hollister getting attacked by the guys. Yeah, just low risk for everyone here. Shane Hollister getting attacked by the other guys. 
Alex Reynolds wasn't going to think too much of it, but then he's like, ah, you know what? Fuck these guys. In fact, I think it would almost be a better success for them because of that. All right, 104 minutes. Good chunk of it's about to be taken up with uh, the time splitters. Alex Shelley, Kushida. We'll have Johnny this time because Beretta's doing his thing. Uh, we'll have Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson still there. I feel like they're going to be the guys here. Uh, let me see. Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, uh, show, because we need a representation from 3K. We need an LIJ one. It's generally Hiromu, but I think I'll do Sonata, just to give him that extra little oomph. And then we need a Birds of Prey representation, which is pretty much always going to be Ladybeard. Not, nothing against Dalton Castle, but... <laughs> there we go. Oh, not not Carl Anderson, Ladybeard. Wow. I think he can handle Mike okay. He's starting to get over. How how much do you think this annoys certain people to see that he's kind of getting over, even as a job guy? <laughs> I think it probably annoys a lot of people. There we go. All right. <laughs> Time Splitters Championship Series moves away from gut style while Time Splitters. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to find the best way to word this. This next event. All right, yeah, Time Splitters Championship Series event has teams <laughs> uh, avoid being shot by paint paintball guns fired by time splitters there we go so the idea is that it's been the Nickelodeon gut style but this time Shelly and Kushida are just abusing people <laughs> I don't know if I should do anything other than just neutral here. <laughs> and I'll say that there's a low, low injury risk being associated with these guys running around getting shot. I think that'll be, that'll be, that'll be the one. This mostly just gets them over a little bit. And we'll throw this uh, up here. Lady Bear against career ending man. <laughs> Lady Bear better have a career ending injury. Let's give let's give Alex Reynolds a reason to kind of help out. Let's let's make that happen. So Akira Tozawa, Naruki Doi, and let's have uh, let's have Brother Ray. No, actually, let's have Shane. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have an earlier run in with these guys, that's non physical. Doi and Tozawa, corner Alex, and look to beat him down until Shane. Uh, shows up. And they leave. So it's kind of a thing where it's like they're not like intimidated, but they just kind of see the uh, the the evened up odds, and they're like, you know what? It's not worth it. We got we got stuff we got stuff going on this weekend. There's no there's no issues here. 
Let's let's not make further issues, at least for now. <clears throat> so that'll be earlier in the in the uh, in the deal. Yeah, maybe something. Eh, you know what? I'll throw that like uh, up here somewhere. There we go. Yeah, Tama, we gotta do. We gotta do. Eh, let me see here. I think I've hit on, oh no, we didn't hit on everything. Hang on, because we got we got our big angle to do here. Sammy Sabay, Father Kingston, I don't know if I have put him in here. Yes, Violent J, Attorney at Law. Oh, I need to bring, I need to go get uh, Tommaso. Borrow, there we go. That's right. We, we we have that angle we need to do. Sammy. Kingston. Violet J. And Tommaso Ciampa. There we go. Uh, let's see. Sammy and Kingston out with... Champa, their lawyer. Time Splitter's lawyer. Uh, violent J out to sign match for Revolution. So, yeah, we'll do like six minutes of this. How how well can he talk still? Okay. Can't be that popular though. This will die a horrendous death. I think it'll be fine. Tommaso Ciampa's not really a speaker either, so Sammy and uh Kingston are definitely carrying this one. <laughs> this will be this will be interesting to see. Uh we'll need like seven minutes of that, I think. So I'd say decent success for them because they get their match. And then just via minor success there. I hope I sign Violent J, by the way, to a paper appearance. Because I might just like I might just like send him away and then every just keep him technically on on staff and then every few months or so, if I have a need for a uh, a lawyer character, he could just take that over. All right, we're at 122 minutes. We got about three more minutes of stuff here, and I'm trying to think about. Um, let's see, we could do Ta Tama. All right, so I'm I'm looking ahead to what I've got going on here, because at this point, you know what? I've got a I've got a funny idea, because <laughs> I I was been meaning to do this. Well, that's the thing is Nakamura is technically not here. Technically out. All right. So there's been something I've been meaning to do. So we'll do it. So <laughs> let's let's do this. Tama Tonga. Paul. Paul Levesque. There we go. Tama with his title. Uh, trying to think. Randy Orton's heel turn. I mean, good. I guess I don't really watch it. I did see the thing that he did with the gauge in uh, Jeff Hardy's ear. That was painful. Other than that, I don't really watch enough to really know. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Tama with his title. Um, damn. Okay, because I, I feel like I need, like, something I'm going to say about this. Like, uh, let's just see. Mocking Nakamura while Levesque uh, walks over. To reprimand him 
for injuring Knock. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Which, of course, is going to blow Tomatonga's mind that Paul Levesque is just there <laughs> in the way that he is. So we'll put that, uh, yeah, we'll put that about there, I think. That'll be fine right there. <clears throat> And I think I'm ready. That's 125 minutes, 17 segments, and I think we're ready to go then. <coughs> no, nothing I was gonna do on this show. I think it's I think it's on breakout. I'm gonna do something. <coughs> All right. So we immediately <coughs> wow. I immediately start off with uh, Samoa Joe opening up the show. And uh, he he grabs a mic as he comes down to the as he uh, gets in the ring, and he is uh, quite irritated that he has been forgotten about in the heavyweight title picture, and that he has been uh, continuing to be overlooked after his uh, loss to uh, Katsuyori Shibata, and uh, going to take out his frustrations on Will Osprey, and uh, Osprey put up a, a decent fight. Uh, almost 20 minutes, but eventually tapped out to a Coquina clutch. Superb wrestling in great heat. Samoa Joe getting the win. I feel like it would have been slightly better than a 79 if uh, it was a little bit later in the show, but I'll I'll take what I got. <clears throat> Joe tapping out Will Ospreay with a Coquina clutch. Kind of having to be forced to, uh, to uh, let go. And uh, kind of having to be having to be uh, physically removed from Will Osprey in that Coquina clutch, and then he uh, grabs a mic, or maybe even you know what it might be the the WCW thing. I think I would I think I would steal that from WCW. Have the camera guy in the corner, and just Samoa Joe just looking right into the camera, and putting Shane and Akira Tozawa on notice that he will get his again, and he will rise back up and. Look to take the title, no matter which one of them is champion. Yes, stay hydrated, about to shut up. <laughs> I really should have gotten maybe I don't I don't have. I'm trying to do the non soda thing. I have water enhancers for that. I still kind of do coffee though. So, <clears throat> so while he does that, Prince Devitt's music hits, and uh, him and Bob Sapp walk out. Uh, Devitt continues to talk himself up and his new MMA prowess, thanks to the teachings of Bob Sapp. Uh, Joe is walking to the back. He looks a little incensed that he seems to have been uh, interrupted by Devitt. And, uh, you know, he kind of glares at Prince Devitt as Devitt's walking down. Devitt looks like he just took a shit in his, uh, in his tights. And uh, Bob Sapp kind of steps in the middle of him, just kind of physically uh, gets himself in there. I feel like a stare down between Joe and Bob Sapp, even though Bob Sapp's like 45, would still be kind of badass. <laughs> so Bob Sapp kind of gets to the middle and Joe's just on his way to the back while uh, Devitt just kind of continues talking himself up. And then we get Prince Devitt versus Charlie Haas, a local competitor <laughs> that was brought in. And uh, ends up having another MMA hybrid rules match against Charlie Haas. Lasts about 13 minutes, eventually locks in a heel hook and forces Charlie Haas to tap out. One sec. So Devin forcing Haas to tap out wins his uh, MMA hybrid rules match. And uh, Sap raises Devin's hand. And uh, it's at this moment that Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards both come out. And Davey's been calling out Devitt for his uh, faux MMA for over the last few weeks. And he says that he's been looking forward to a match with him. And he says that he has uh, looked into having an official match against Prince Devitt to really show off his MMA prowess. And uh, Devitt says, hey, 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 I'll get it for you. You want your match, you'll have your match. You'll have it, but we can't have it at Revolution. I need to have uh, I need to have some sort of uh, short fight camp first before I decide to uh, 
before I, before I decide to to take you on. So you gotta you gotta give me a couple of weeks to to get a fight camp in to face you. And so at that moment, it is officially booked for uh, about two and a half weeks from now at the Doy Darts Holiday Special one on one hybrid rules. So he'll take just a couple of weeks to uh, get himself together for that. Prince Devitt versus Davy Richards. Hey, villain, what's up? <laughs> there we go. MMA hybrid rules. There we go. And we'll put Prince Devitt's, uh, his, his training to the test as uh, he will face Davy Richards. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, we get the Time Splitters Championship Series, and uh, generally they've been going through a lot of uh, physical challenges uh, each week. <laughs> wow. Alex Shelley came across well. Kushida was good. Matt Jackson was underwhelming. Show looked dreadful, and Lady Beard underperformed. <laughs> So really, it was the Time Splitters and Nick Jackson and Johnny Gargano who did okay. It was the Time Splitters show with Nick Jackson and Johnny Gargano doing all right, and the rest of them just kind of shitting up the place. Is Booker T available? I don't think he is. I'm pretty sure he's signed with WWE. Uh, but either way, they've kind of gone away from mo from the more of the general physical challenges like they had on Guts. And uh, decide that they're going to do a last man standing uh, type deal where it is a paintball game. And uh, as, uh, as the competitors seem to wonder where their paintball guns are at, uh, Shelly and Kushida produce their guns and they basically say, no, 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 you run, we shoot. And that's basically what the physical challenge is at this point. And... Um, Unfortunately, with uh, with uh, Beretta not there, Johnny Gargano can't uh, can't get the uh, the best on this one. However, the Young Bucks do a good job of uh, sacrificing just about everyone else uh, on the field and end up getting the win. And the Young Bucks doing well in the Time Splitters Championship Series as uh, they survive. All right. Do tag teams need their own show? No, I don't think so. I think this is the first time I'm really doing stuff with a bunch of tag teams at once. I feel like it's it's not too uh, not too bad to, to continue to do this. By the way, thanks for the the ratings thing. Yeah, I've been working on some other stuff too, but it's been kind of slower going as a slightly different look. Uh, we're in the back, and uh, Alex Reynolds is uh, walking around. He he gets out of uh, Brother Ray's office, and uh, Doi and Tozawa seem to corner Alex Reynolds and uh, look like maybe they're about to do something. They kind of get get the uh, get the intimidation on on Alex Reynolds as uh, as that's happening. Shane Hollister comes by with his belt, and. Uh, Sort of, uh, sort of, uh, kind of gets gets up to them, and just like, hey, what's going on here? And uh, Tozawa and Doi seeing that uh, it, the 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 uh, scales are not in their favor and it's evened up, they decide that this is this is not their fight to have right now. Um, they're just they're just gonna go ahead and wait till Saturday to deal with them. <laughs> Booker Tree, what what the fuck happened? <laughs> oh my god it's a f <laughs> booker t is a as a goddamn like weed snoop dog gimmick he just comes out as booker tree oh my god or he's a loch ness monster we can call him booker tree fitty <laughs> And you know how much that Girl Scout asked for his, asked for his, uh, asked for the cookies? How much? Tree fitty. And that's when I realized that Girl Scout was actually spin a me on the, he was actually spin a on the front porch. And I'm like, God damn it, Booker. Get the hell off my cat. <laughs> Get off my front porch. 
get away from my family. I screwed up. I screwed up all of that that I wanted to say. I just no, mumbled my way through that. I hope you. I think he got it. <laughs> uh, Adam Cole is in Brother Ray's office. He's not sure what's going on. He wants, uh, you know, he's just he's just kind of sitting there. Brother Ray hasn't exactly addressed him other than having told him to sit sit in his office. And um, you know, Brother Ray sits down with him, and uh, you know, turns on the monitor, says to watch the next match, and uh, he wants to make sure that Adam Cole does not get involved in uh, in this match. And uh, Adam Cole's not too happy about the fact that Brother Ray seemed to have uh, key, it seems to practically be babysitting him for the next match to uh, to make this happen. Damn, that worked out pretty well, actually. I gotta remember Chris Hero having an having eighty in ring performance as something fairly noteworthy, <laughs> but uh, either way, great wrestling, good heat. Uh, Juice and Matt Cage from uh, day one getting the win over Rude and Hero from Revolt. As uh, as uh, Matt Cage rolls up Chris Hero, uh, not no tights or anything, just uh, managed to uh, just managed to kind of get the slip on him, and a bit of miscommunication from Rude and Hero helps Robinson and Cage get the victory. But they hightail it out very quickly before anything can happen. And uh, Brother Ray's still with Adam Cole. Cole's none too happy about the fact that his boys just lost. And, uh, you know, he's he's in his office, but he's also on screen to announce the fact that he is reconsidered the fact that he was going to do a match uh, between them. And he's decided that he is going to do a match between these four people. And it will be at... In fact, it'll be the main event of Hawkeye Pro, Infamous, the Doy Darts Holiday Special. I don't even have a set match for this. I actually have to make this match real quick. I, I don't have a match type for this. Uh, oh, God, what do I got to do? 4v4. Okay, so I'll start with, I'll start with 4v4 elimination because that's the basis of it. Okay, 4v4. And it is called the Prisoners of War match. There we go. So the idea of the Prisoners of War match is a four versus four. In fact, I'm going to do this. Uh, four on four elimination match. Where the ring is surrounded by... Oops by an enclosed cell with holding cells on two sides for when a competitor, let's see here, competitor is eliminated. Oh my God, I cannot type today. Eliminated. Last team standing wins. I guess it's not like last man standing. So, let's see. Last team remaining. We'll just put that. There we go. 4v4 regular. Uh, yeah, we'll do regular. Vince Russo much? Hey, I think it's a it's a it's a I, I think it's a, a decent well, we're going to make it high cuz that's something that's something that I think would be yeah, match entrances regular, total elimination, uh, injury risk. Uh, I'd say low-ish, because if it's very low for, yeah, we'll do low. Content risk is I'd say average. Mm. Uh, lower average. Damn. Uh, I mean, you know what? If we're gonna, if we're gonna, I, I'm making it. I want to make it because, okay, content risk. If I'm thinking of something almost like NXT doing war games, like it was a lot of impressive stuff, but it wasn't exactly brutal. Like when I think very high, I'm thinking Japanese deathmatch. When I'm thinking high, I'm thinking like hardcore ECW match with some blood. Average, I think, would still be 
you know, I would imagine there's some blood, um, but maybe a more WWE esque type. I don't know. WWE's is almost low, isn't it? Let's just let's just do low. Name value, yes. Default match, no. Uh, yeah, I think anywhere between ten and sixty is a good idea. In fact, we'll we'll up it to four minutes just for the uh, the sake of of uh, entrances. Steel cell, that's definitely happening. Uh, anything else? I, I guess there's not really anything in particular with that. Weapons, I guess. We'll have weapons. I mean, weapons will be in the ring, so I guess we can just... Yeah, we'll put weapons around. CCW. Yeah, what are they getting that? Uh, pinfall submission. There's no countouts. There's no disqualifications. It's pinfall or submission only, as far as I'm concerned. And I think that would be pretty much it. Stoppage, I meh. pinfall submission. There we go. Prisoners of war, wherever the fuck that's at now. Oh, see, now I can't even find it. Because it should be like right here. Hang on. We'll just do uh, 4v4 prisoners of war. There we go. So it's like war games, but everyone starts off immediately. So yeah, Adam Cole. We've got Johnny Hawkeye. Chris Hero. And Robert Rude. Facing off against Matt Cage. Juice Robinson. Uh, Cody Hall and Afa Anoa'i Jr. All right, so Revolt versus Day One Prisoners. Whoops, Prisoners of War match. I think that'd be pretty cool. You have a survive. Basically, it's a Survivor Series elimination match. Survivor Series elimination match, but there's no disqualifications. You're surrounded in a cell, and then you have to be placed basically in a penalty box uh, when you get eliminated. I don't think that's too overly complicated. Oh, there is one little caveat for this. Losing team is disbanded. So this will be the final match between these two teams. This is absolutely it. It will be finished at Doi Dart's Holiday Special. Revolt versus Day One, the Prisoners of War match. The losing team is disbanded. And there you go. Let's do this. All right, so we get Sammy and Kingston coming out with uh, their lawyer, Tommaso Ciampa. I knew this was going to lay an egg, honestly. <laughs> um, I like how he still did get a very good for his uh, lawyer gimmick. And uh, the Time Splitters, they, they introduced the Time Splitters lawyer, which is a returning character that has not been seen in Hawkeye Pro Wrestling in over two years. It's Violent J, attorney at law. The legal representation for the Time Splitters, Violent J, attorney at law, uh, has looked over uh, the has looked over the paperwork that uh, has been sent to him by uh, Sammy Sammy Sabe and Father Kingston's team uh, with Tommaso Ciampa and uh, and his guys, and he signs the papers and says that on behalf of the Time Splitters, uh, they are accepting this match. So, if that is what the settlement is going to be, that is what the settlement is going to be. As the Time Splitters will defend... Oh my goodness, come on. The Time Splitters will defend the tag team titles. Sammy Sabe and Father Kingston. They want to pull themselves... They got to pull themselves away. They got to pull themselves away from, the, uh, from, from their uh, championship series to do this. So, they're not too happy. But nonetheless, they will defend the tag titles. So, Hawkeye Pro. 
tag team. Hawkeye Pro tag team titles on the line. Time Splitters versus Sammy Sabay and Father Kingston. <clears throat> I do want to make Violent J a recurring character. Like, it's not going to be all the time, but I think I'm going to keep him around since he's on exclusive pay. Well, damn, that... Uh, that downside is a real pain in the ass, too. Because if I don't use him for like six months until I need another lawyer, <laughs> that's going to be... Well, actually, I think I'm only literally only paying like 1500 a month, if that. So it might not be all that bad. Nonetheless, uh, there you go. The contract has been signed. Time Splitters versus Sammy Sabay and Father Kingston for the tag titles at Revolution. Tomatonga is with his title. Uh, he's uh, he's cutting a bit of a promo and uh, mocking Nakamura for the fact that he's uh, he's uh, not here and injured and potentially not able to uh, to move or deal with uh, his his uh, you know his in ring ability anymore. He might not be able to wrestle anymore. And uh, out of all people, Paul Avec walks over and uh, he just had to mention that he uh, he heard what Tomatonga had to say and uh you know Paul Levesque is uh he he is uh he's been kind of turning over a new leaf he's been looking for uh potential potential uh next person to take over uh his role as uh as as a uh, um you know a top level competitor and uh you know he he'd been talking to Shane Hollister and, uh, you know, talks to Tom Tonga and said that, you know, he's he's turned over a new leaf uh, since he's gotten here. And, uh, you know, he doesn't he doesn't want to be that guy anymore, but he'll be happy to uh, help the next guy uh, perhaps become the next cerebral assassin. And he respects what Tom Tonga has done, but he felt that Tom Tonga just went a little too far. <laughs> Cue the irony of Triple H and the litany of shit that he did. <laughs> Tom Atonga is flabbergasted at this. Number one, because of Levesque's past. And number two, because it's Paul Levesque. Uh, so, you know, the fact that we're seeing Paul Levesque is, uh, is uh, something. We haven't really, we haven't seen him more than maybe once or twice on, uh, on Adrenaline since Anniversary. So, uh, Tama Tonga just doesn't really know what to say about it and just walks away. Uh, we get Pete Dunn coming out to commentary, uh, for the main event match. He looks none too happy about what he's had to deal with over the last, uh, over the last week. Uh, of course he tried to, uh, cash in the opportunity trophy last week, uh, to, uh, against a downed Shane Hollister Ended up getting a, a kick in the face by Katsuri Shibata for his troubles. And uh, so he's going to mosey on out here uh, for a Shibata's match. And we get Katsuri Shibata versus Trent Beretta. By the way, this is going to be not the greatest of ratings, I think, unless we really start hitting out of the park in the last two uh, deals here. So this might be one of the worst one of the worst shows I put on for a, for a go-home show is also, yeah. <laughs> An exceptional match, though, as uh, Shibata, for some reason, just did, like, an, only an 83. And then Beretta did a 77, so they did all right. But uh, eventually, PK's Trent Beretta gets the win and uh, gets to celebrate his main event victory. And uh, Pete Dunn has the opportunity trophy, attempts to spoil it. Looks like he's about to haul it down to the sneak, um, sneak into the ring. He gets to about ringside as uh, Shibata turns around and notices that uh, Dunn was trying to sneak his way into the ring. Uh, Dunn kind of slinks away, backs up with his opportunity trophy. And uh, as, he's, as he's doing that, Shibata's just kind of egging him on, telling him to get in the ring. Telling him to uh, to come on if he if he really has a problem with him, get in the ring and deal with it. And uh, Dunn thinks better of it, which is probably a good idea for his health. And uh, just decides to to walk away. <clears throat> and uh, well, it happened to Alex Reynolds. It almost happened to Alex Reynolds. This time it happens to Shane Hollister, and they do get the do get a better end of him. Shane Hollister getting uh, lit up by uh, Akira Tozawa and Naruki Doi 
as they look to soften up the champion going into Akira Tozawa's heavyweight title match uh, this weekend at Revolution. And uh, they just kind of laying in on him. Alex Reynolds this time seems to have uh, have noticed and uh, starts to walk away, gets a little bit ways away, kind of stops, looks over, and just kind of does the ah, uh, fuck it type, uh, type shrug and just runs in to uh, beat down Akira Tozawa and Nariki Doi. An unintentional save against uh, Shane Hollister. And uh, Shane is pussy champ. I don't think he's a pussy. He's just been getting his shit kicked in by Tozawa and Doi, which is kind of what he was doing beforehand. But it was Brother Ray and Tozawa and Alex Reynolds. So he's just been kind of getting the shit kicked out of him consistently. He does get some wins. He he gets it. He gets it in the matches when he needs them. He's just been getting kind of shat on <laughs> with beatdowns. So Alex Reynolds kind of booting them away there and uh, evening the odds and uh, Tozawa and Doi head for the hills. And that is it. That is the go home show with adrenaline. Now we have our breakout go home show. (coughs) Yeah, when I think of a pussy champion, I'm thinking of somebody like uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think like the, the like what a pussy champ like I'm trying to think of a uh, a WWE star that was like that like a Seth Rollins when he was champ he wasn't a dominant champ by any means he was constantly getting um he was constantly getting kind of uh yes yeah, so when Seth Rollins was champ he constantly had J and J security or Kane or somebody interfering Shane's been able to handle himself in matches he just gets kind of he just gets kind of crapped on by guys in unfair fights outside of it. Uh, Spike Spike has a month remaining. Japan, oh man, I might actually just leave that alone for right now because we are so goddamn close to 41s. I'm, I'm hard right now how close we are. We got 40s right here because, okay, I need 22 areas. These are 22 areas, these top two rows. We can slot in Central Europe for the 37. We can slot in Scandinavia for the 40 instead of the 39. So once this hits a 41 and this hits a 41, we are in it to win it. And I can start uh, not having to worry about TV schedules that much. <laughs> not having to worry about what it what my uh, what my TV looks like. Uh, and and having 18,000 uh, broadcasting deals for my shows. It's this this all is about to go away and it's gonna be two. One for adrenaline, one for breakout. <laughs> Alright, we are doing it solid. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need. Oh yeah. Right. Paul Levec. So that's Paul Levec's Paul Levec's uh adrenaline. Adrenaline uh, alter ego has been uh, is is done for right now. So we need his breakout alter ego. <laughs> I really I really wish Tai Two J were here because I feel like he would completely shit on the idea of of split personality Triple H on different shows. <laughs> uh, locker room incidents. Brian Hebner turn up very late. Stern warning. Okay, no one's really getting all up in arms over it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, Evie, Mayu, Shane. God, it's getting iffy. Yeah, same building, just break out this time. Okay, I know there's one match, I'm pretty sure. Azumi versus Candice LeRae. Honestly, I'm I'm I, I don't know how this is going to do. This is kind of like Azumi's big shot at trying to not suck. This is kind of it right here. I don't know. She had her match against Mayu that she did pretty good against, but like Mayu's a top level competitor, really. So that might not be completely indicative of the fact that she got a seventy two. I'm expecting Kangaroo Jess is good, but she's not 
quite Candice LeRae. So she might be able to pull off close to a 70 for this match. Mankind Triple H. Why Mankind Triple H? More like Cactus Jack Triple H. Oh, oh, you're about to say Cactus Jack Triple H. I wonder if I ruin that for you before the delay kicks in. <laughs> All right, 67 stamina is not bad. We can actually give her some time to work with this. Uh, 82 stam. Okay, that psychology is actually not that bad. 65 is not great, but it could be far worse. And Chono is going to look over them. So, oh, shit. Mm. Am I going to do this? Oh, man. Hang on. I want to see where she's technically at. All right, in the 40s. I don't know if Candace is going to be cool with this. I guess we'll find out. Because, <laughs> like, the meme of Candace LeRae not winning matches, I feel like, has to continue. That we're not, we're not quite there yet to a point where I want this to happen. So we need to keep it running like this. Yeah, she's she's been doing pretty well. This might be arguably be the worst match that she does because she's actually the one carrying here compared to compared to this. <laughs> I'm just kind of looking over the people she's lost to. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> uh, open match, a slow build. I guess so. Yeah. We'll slow build it. We can actually give him like 18 then. Decisive win, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think. So, I mean, mm, so tainted and cheap wins. Oh, so a cheap win is a count out victory. That might be the best option, honestly, for this. Antius stands for anti-establishment. That yeah, makes sense. Sort of. Unless it's anti-S. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to be so on the nose. You know what? I think I'll do that. I think I'll do a cheap victory and a count-out finish. People are probably not going to be happy with the fact that Candice LeRae is losing by count-out. But, and she's willing to do that. I think because of the fact that it's technically a cheap finish. Oh, okay. Japanese pronunciation. I don't do a lot of fucked finishes, I say, as I look into my history of uh, matches, maybe m more so maybe on pay-per-views. I mean, that was clean, uh, clean. St I mean, there was interference there. Uh, I think that was clean-ish. I don't know. It was probably interference. Clean. Uh, interference and clean. Jesus, I'm starting to turn into TNA with some of this. But at least they're not like throw out the match finishes. Like there's sort of interference, but there's kind of reasons for it. Mm. Maybe I'll just do more clean finishes on this next one. That'll be my goal. Because I'll probably have seven or eight matches. Let's just do like maybe two. Maybe two. <laughs> I gotta I gotta limit the amount of fucked finishes that I do on any given on a given pay-per-view. <laughs> um Do I wanna do one on one? Let me let me let me look at the let me look at the history real quick. Uh, breakout. Let me let me see where I was at. That's right. We were doing we were doing revolution stuff with cheating. We should continue that. In fact, we can give we can make this. Oh, you know what? Let's make this as a reason to do a tag. So we'll do a match. We'll do a tag. We'll do that. We'll do the revolution. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think. Because <sighs> I'm, I'm thinking, like, Justice Legion might not be the answer. Evil League of Evil, maybe not. Uh, Reyna's could set up for a... Could set up for a match. 
That would uh, that would honestly maybe be best because like MYC doesn't need to lose again. Neither does Eevee need to exist after causing so many rifts. I don't know. She's got a strong dislike of Madison Eagles for some reason, but she's got a strong friendship with Scarlet Bordeaux, so who knows? I'll fire Evie and hire Scarlet Bordeaux. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, Revolution versus Reyna's in a non title match. All right, I think she might be the weakest link. Uh, maybe not. Okay, I think we can go like 19. How about that? It was never a matter of if, but when. <laughs> when I rehire Scarlet Bordeaux. That one's even older, because the last time Scarlet Bordeaux was in Hawkeye Pro was legit when I was still on TEW 13. I think she was actually from there from day one i can't remember now i can't remember if i brought her in as a as a manager on the first event or if i waited a couple of events i think she was a day one hire because like second or third events when i brought in Io shirai for one match before i had an official women's division let's do Knox, becky Knox. open match we'll make this the storytelling because i feel like they'll probably be able to handle it Slow build, tainted win. There you go. I don't know. Pull the tights, feet on the ropes, figure it out. Powder in the eyes, who knows? Ref bump, chair shot, something along those lines. <laughs> Glad you shut the fuck up about Becky, so you book her now. It's <laughs> a good point. <laughs> and, and probably why Sue Young hasn't been rehired like like uh, <laughs> Jessica Havoc has. <laughs> uh, let's see here. By the way, 3.6 million people for that. That's a big jump. Um, let's see. Shimmer and Shine. So we had that. We should probably do a Heyman Hit Squad thing. I've got an idea for that. I don't know if I want to do it right now or if I should wait. It, I guess it depends on how many matches I want to set up already. Because I think we have, what, two matches set up? Three. We have three set up for the next Infamous. And I have five scheduled. I don't know if I want to do the fourth now or if I want to wait till next week. Actually, we'll probably wait. My low ball and ass deserver. Wow. Um, let's see. Yo, Hamada, Leva with Foley. Um, all right, so Leva, we'll, we'll give Leva a match, like a warm up match before Kana. That'll be that'll be her thing. In fact, we'll do a six-man, because I think that'll give us... We'll have all of Leva Corp wrestle in something. We'll, we'll, give them, we'll give them something. So Leva Bates, Athena, Courtney Rush, and we'll throw... Let's see, Athena and Courtney Rush up there. We can do... The Reinas are doing their thing. Revolution are doing their thing. I don't really want to book NYC, but we'll book Kaylee Ray. And then we'll book... Uh, I don't know. Who who can be my schmucks? To, to I don't have a lot of schmucks. <laughs> Candace is usually used for that, and she's already booked. Um... Oh, shit. Damn it. We need Awesome Kong as a female version. Oh, my God. That that would be interesting. Ah, man. I don't want to do that to Hikaru Shida, man. She's got, she's got some potential. I guess I could do Shimmer and Shine. Penance, penance for their win against the champs last... Last, uh... 
last week. So Leva Court versus Kaylee Ray and and Shimmer and Shine. Kaylee Ray teaming with them is uh Yeah. Actually I got I got the idea. I got the idea of how I can do this. So uh, we can do Man, uh, let's see, 40 minutes. If I go to 60, that'll be about half. I don't know if I want to do just three matches. I could probably pull a fourth in there, so we'll dump it down to about 16, and we'll give Leva Bates the win. Kaylee Ray takes the loss, and how I'll do it is we'll have the open match. We'll make Shimmer and Shine you know, seem up on the level with uh, with uh, Leva because I know there's a decent um, decent difference in the uh, what's the word popularity. Call it in the ring. Uh, let's go. Oh God, damn it! I have an idea, but I don't want to. I don't really want to do it. Uh. All right, so we'll protect. All right, we'll protect uh, Eagles and Matthews. The idea is that they basically abandon Kaylee Ray. I'm already playing a fun game. I, I have a I have a bad feeling about this. I have no idea. Let's do a decisive finish. So we're gonna protect them because what we're doing is we're gonna have them abandon Kaylee Ray. They don't give a crap about her. So. Yeah, we'll do that. And then I feel like we still need, you know what? Cuz I I told you I didn't want to I didn't want to crap on Hikaru Shida. We'll have her main event against somebody. Mm. Against who though is the is the deal? Hmm. Uh, I'm thinking Kana to give Kana a, uh, a, a warm up. Did she have one last week? Did she have a match last week? She had one two weeks ago. So, yeah, I'm thinking, I haven't done this match and I guess Hikaru Shida is not as on the level as her, so we can do that main event. When is SummerSlam? I have no idea. She's up there, but she's not up up there, so this could work. 82 Psych, 80 Stam. 84 Psych, 82 Stam. Where? I mean, if it's not at Barclays Center, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to give her 20 minutes to make this work. See what you got. We'll have Foley take care of this. <clears throat> Kana gets it. Uh, let's do an open match. Call it in the ring. And a decisive win. So we'll give her a tougher we'll give her a tougher match. So I think I think we're good with that. You're going to create commercials like the rest of me at 21 Hollywood with the main roster. Oh, that sounds cool. Be interesting to see. Uh, this is the last year at the Barclays Center. I mean, technically, yes. But also, it, there's always renewing contracts. Uh, 80 minutes, that's quite a bit. But I think, you know what, let's, we'll, we'll pop down a couple of, uh, Pop that down a couple minutes. We'll we'll take that part out so that we can lower this to fourteen, and this one will stay at sixteen. Why not? All right. Yeah, I think we're good. <clears throat> um. 
Okay, so let's go Azumi, Mio, and Candace. So, yeah, I'd say selling, entertainment, and selling. All right. Azumi celebrates with Mio on her rare victory as Candace looks pained at yet another loss. There we go. Um, all right, let's do how long? Four? Yeah, we'll do four. Why not? Uh, I'd say it's a decent success. It's a it's a rare win for her. It's a rare win, so we'll give that to her up there. I'm trying to think if I want to start with that or if I want to start with a big angle. Because, like, that's kind of how I do things is I like to start off the show with a match, but I could almost WWE it and start off with, like, 10 minutes of something uh, to to push this. In fact, I might actually do that. We're gonna. We'll start actually with. Uh, we'll start with the Evil League of Evil. How about that? Dastardly, Mary Dobson. Uh, who was it? Doc Gallows and Helmsley, the Creator. All right. So Evil League of Evil out. Uh, to show the power of the gauntlet. Uh, Helmsley, whoops. Helmsley states, it's, no, it's not the, it's just the beginning. There we go. And I'd say probably six minutes to, to try to get that out there. Uh, minor success. Yeah, minor success all the way around. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know what? Take the scripts off them. Let's, I think that'll be fine. Oh, no, I didn't want to do six minutes. I wanted to do, like, eight. I'm trying to see what else. <laughs> I do want to see, what do I have pre-booked, by the way? Did I make sure? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I literally have one match left to do. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting conversation, but it's also something that I probably also... Uh, it, it will ruin my concentration. <laughs> That's why I'm... Uh, Dragon Gate and the G1 are going on. And, well, probably not Dragon Gate anymore, but G1's going on. And I'm desperately trying not to watch anything because the last time I did, this, this damn thing went like two hours and 45 minutes for two shows. And I don't want that happening again, especially because here I still have to book a pay-per-view. Uh, so forgive me if I'm not really doing too much as far as trying to think about that as much as I'm thinking about um, trying to tr trying to figure out like what my next angle is going to be which I'm already in a predicament here okay yeah Leva Bates and Athena and Courtney Rush Courtney Rush they're both over anyway, so you're already going longer. Eh. Yay. I didn't know they were done already. A 530? Usually that doesn't I don't know. Usually that doesn't happen. I didn't know I didn't know that they were already I didn't know that New Japan was New Japan must have started early to this today. Maybe they started early because they're on the road again after this show. That's weird. I'm not used to that. Start at 2.30? Okay. Oh, by the way, we should turn this up a little bit. Because it's... Gotta do, you gotta have Rock Hood 
available to listen to. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Leave a corp out. Uh, let's see. They usually start pretty early. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, leave a corp out. Leave a once, a tune up before she beats Kana at Revolution to challenge EO. There we go. Ada's the Brave Gate champ. Wasn't he already that? Weren't they already like trying to pin a lot of their hopes and dreams on Ada? Is he going to be the new T-Hawk or are they just sort of like... It's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, he's here too. Okay. Yama Hulk is the two, two twin gate champs. Oh wow. <clears throat> uh, Revolution versus Reina's. Uh, so we'll have. Uh, obviously, we'll have Ashley Flair. Brittany Knight and Becky Knox out. So we'll have them come out and then we'll have. Uh, okay, I want to I want to see what they're going to talk about. Actually, OK, so revolution. Revolution out. They discuss. That's why I don't even want to talk too much about Dragon Gate, because I could talk too much about Dragon Gate. Jesus Christ. We're already an hour 41 in. This is going to suck. God damn it. 5.30. Ah. Revolution out. They discuss uh, the way they won last week. And don't really want to do that again. But they do. Because why not? Probably probably like a foot on the ropes or something like that. More cheating. 24-hour stream. Uh. <laughs> uh, kill me. Uh, okay. So, Ashley Flair. Becky Knox. Uh, Brittany Knight, obviously, uh, Ayako Hamada and Arisa Nakajima are going to be none too happy about this. So we'll just sell everything since they had a match. Well, Flair didn't, but we'll, we'll not rate it on that. Uh, Reynas are not happy with, uh, Revolutions cheating. Revolution uh, seem. I'm trying to. What's the word? Ugh. Oblivious. That's the word. Oblivious to their cheating ways. There we go. Like, what? Us? Really? What? How? Skyrimius. What the fuck? Oh, god damn it. I should just... I should... I should just time you out for that. I really should. God damn. Here. This is... This is my timeout. You ready? There. You've been timed out for five seconds for that... For that joke. <laughs> all any and all puns will get a five second timeout. <laughs> Three wouldn't have been enough. Uh, hang on. <laughs> okay. Uh let's see. So that'll that'll go there. 
and we'll have James James Mitchell out with Kana. <laughs> James Mitchell coming out with Kana. Uh, entertainment and uh, let's say overness. All right, I'm I'm I don't have the I don't have the wherewithal to keep doing it like this right now. <laughs> I'm busy trying to do this. Wow. Okay, someone's lost a bit of momentum, so she needs she needs some back. This win will help out. Mitchell out with Kana. Says Sheeta is a great competitor. Ah, competitor. Competitor. Uh, but um, I'm trying to I'm trying to word it correctly. I don't want to I don't want him to be like, but Kana needs a warm up. You know what? Fuck it. Kana needs a warm up. Just just kind of letting her in on the thing like, hey. I don't this is like simultaneously like praising her and shitting on her in one fell swoop. I don't know how to feel about this. But we'll give her some success for the fact that he at least acknowledges her abilities. Uh, let's see. Wow, you have Rusev, Devitt, Creed, Yafusik. Oh, wow. I've considered the Usos, by the way, for mine. But they, they, they're they locked into like some fucking eight-year contracts with WWE. I think they still at least got like three years left. They had some long ass contracts. Um, oh man, how do I want to end this? So okay, if Kana's out there, Leva has to come out. <sighs> man, this is this is really gonna shit on him. I feel, but. <laughs> So, let's see. If we do five minutes of this, I'm trying to think how I wanna how I wanna word this, and if I really wanna have just Io Shirai just shit can the both of them. <laughs> Women's Nina bid card championship. I I opted not to because I did the tag team. Cause I'm like, we, we have enough people kind of fighting for the, the women's title off and on. I feel I don't need to do a mid, if I had twice the women that I had, if I had like an extra 12 or so women, I'd probably do a mid card title. But I feel like at this point, the way I have it sit is we have about maybe 10 of them. You have about 10, yeah, about 10 of them fighting for the women's title sort of in singles and then another 10 or 12 that are sort of actively tag teams. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to mention anything. I just looked over on, on my other monitor for something that I didn't realize happened. And uh, I might fix that on the next on the next uh, <laughs> uh, the next time I stream. <laughs> didn't know that that kid. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So <laughs> Oh man, do I want to shit on them with this? All right. Yeah, I'm trying to do a stare down, but I don't know if I just want to cuz I feel like we're looking too much I feel like we're looking too much at um you know, just the idea because I don't want to I don't want to sway it one way or another between because I want to I don't want to make Leva look like a complete geek. If we're not gonna do the same thing for Kana, because I feel like we're already foreshadowing a, a, the next title match, 
if we're just gonna geek Leva Bates out that badly and just make Kana look like the only real person who could fight her. Uh, Leva out. Uh, looks to insult, but... <sighs> yeah. Eo storms out to lay her out and does so for Kana as she recovered from ah there we go <clears throat> uh, let me see here <laughs> I guess I gotta mm. Mm. <laughs> do we we don't do that for five minutes that might be four minutes actually so yeah Paul Heyman's coming after her going like no don't do it already this really does kind of put her over like a million bucks I feel like this sort of nerds them out a little bit but <laughs> gives them a reason to fight her later so so that'll be fine. We'll just leave it as is. And um, uh, let me see here. What is that emoji? E N footy. Oh, a soccer soccer thing. And I know there's probably enough people in here being like, it's football. All right. So mm, we need something in between that. And I think this is where I'm going to do this bit. So let's do. <sighs> so Lufisto and Kangaroo Jess and Carl Anderson with Mick Foley. The blue dot is conspicuously missing. So yeah, inter. Whoops. Yeah, entertainment. 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 Entertain me. All right. Four minutes on this. Actually, five. Just as Legion speak their... Oh, whoops. Speak their piece. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, actually, is it speak their piece like peace? Or speak their piece like... Like a piece of their mind? I would, I would assume that's actually what it is. Oh, great. Both of them are on the Google search. Speak your peace and hold your peace. Now I want to know. Okay, speak your peace is... That makes sense. Speak your peace, giving, giving someone a piece of their mind. That's what I figured. We're going we're gonna to have correct goddamn grammar here. In my stream, <laughs> we do not allow the we do not allow the the um I don't know I got since when good point I can't even speak English properly as I'm talking as I'm as I'm going on about um <laughs> as I'm going on about proper grammar I still can't speak English properly uh, okay speak their piece to. Fully about the danger of Evil League of Evil. Fully sets up match at Revolution, and then I'll just leave it at that, and then I can put that in there. So I guess I'd say it's a decent success because they're gonna get they're gonna get a good shot at, at something here when I put that in. Yeah, since <laughs> they suck. <laughs> Um, actually, we're going to put it like right in the middle there. So it's probably a good 20 so minutes there. So blue dot conspicuously missing. So we need to have him, uh, doing his thing. Entertainment, I'd say major success for this. The blue dot in justice legion lair. Um,
He is still looking at, well, uh, he, he looks again at something in Hidden Room and looks to grab it to take with him. Ah, to take. There we go. Women's only pay-per-view. Well, it's not a women's only pay-per-view. Women's only TV show. I mean, they're still they're still managers, which is kind of how we got around the awful uh, ratings originally by having a lot of male managers show up. Because <laughs> a lot of them still can't. Uh, they aren't the greatest talkers. <laughs> so four minutes on that to do this bit. And we'll put that there. Yeah. All right, so we're at 116. I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah, we need to do something about this one. Uh, mm. uh, actually, let's do something slightly different. Let's do Miyu Yamashita with codename Maki and codename Maki. <laughs> Can she talk? Should she should she talk? By the way, these are slightly altered from where she was originally at to slightly better reflect her abilities. Slightly. Um you know what? We might give her mm, you know what? Let's just have Paul Heyman talk for her. She can talk too. But we'll have Paul Heyman as part of it. The other two won't talk for right now. They're masked. Uh Heyman out with Miu. Whoops. Miu. Talks up her first pay-per-view match. Um, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a good way to talks up her first pay-per-view match and Plans on managing another champion. So the idea that he, he he maybe talks up Dash a little bit too. As like a, you know what, she's an extremely strong competitor. However, they're, we're going to have ourselves a future champion. Some weeb shit. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to take like two seconds to watch this. Oh, Dragon Gate anime opening. I'll have to look into that later. But now that that's in my history, I'll be able to remember it. So yeah, she'll get a chance to actually say something, which is a good. It's always a good thing. Um, I guess we'll take... Oh man, I don't think it's a good idea to take the script off of Miu. I don't think she's there yet. Uh, we'll do that uh, here. No, we'll do it here. We'll, we'll put a buffer in between there and Mayu Kairi Evie Dash okay so Dash and Evie I feel like should do something huh Dash and Kairi need to kind of build up their deal. So they'll they'll cut a promo. How about that? Uh, Dash and Kyrie backstage promo about Heyman Hit Squad and their plans to unmask unmask off of them, all of them. There you go. We just we just need that we just need that that little thing built in there. And I think we're good. Right at about two hours. So we'll we'll plow through this real quick and uh be on our merry way. Did I get everything? I guess I got everything. Um as far as my booking sheet is concerned, it looks like this is I think we've definitely gotten it. <clears throat> cool. 
And let's go. So we start off immediately with a breakout with the Evil League of Evil coming out. And of course, they had used the gauntlet last week uh, against Evie and hit her with it. And uh, Evil League of Evil are out again to uh, talk up the power of the gauntlet and to show uh, and to tell people that Evie's not here. She's been eradicated from this earth due to the power of the gauntlet. And, uh, you know, have a lot of threats about the future of Breakout with, uh, with this in existence. And uh, Helmsley, of course, stating that Evie was only the beginning. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't take over Breakout uh, with just a single victim. So there we go. It looks like only Helmsley did well in that. Everyone else did uh, kind of shitty. <sighs> Whatever. That's the point of having him there, so he can hopefully carry some of the load. So, there you go. It is only the beginning for the Evil League of Evil. Wow. You know, Candace, Candace in the whole, um, Candace in the whole, uh, like, she's so hit or miss. I need to see what her consistent receipt rating is, because sometimes she'll do 65s, sometimes she'll do, like, 80. It really seems to depend on the day. So, you know what? Okay enough match. Seem to be carrying each other to a decent match. Uh, oh, it even says decent match. Azumi beating Candice LeRae by countout. You know, the fucked finish might also have not uh, helped help things. It seems like it was okay. But, uh, yeah. Azumi getting the win. Candice LeRae uh, not getting pinned or submitted. She just seemed to have been counted out instead. Uh, maybe she got hurt or she just wasn't, I don't know, wasn't paying attention. I feel like that's not a very veteran thing, so maybe she, was, she got a little bit hurt and uh, couldn't make it. I don't know. Azumi gets the win by count out anyway. She celebrates with Mio. It's a it's a rare win and it's it's a good win for her to get back against uh, uh, against the win that uh, the loss that she suffered at the hands of Mayu at Damnation and uh, Mio and her uh, constant tutelage uh, to help get uh, Azumi uh, to be the next great female competitor. Seems to be working, and she got a win over Candice LeRae. Candice, meanwhile, is uh, she's she's she looks kind of pained and sad at the fact that she suffered yet another loss uh, on TV, and that will be it for that. As we go to the back for the Justice Legion, three members of Justice Legion minus the blue dot, conspicuously missing, of course, and uh, they speak their piece to Mick Foley about the uh, the dangers of the Evil League of Evil and the Gauntlet. Foley, of course, lets people lets him know that the he has actually. I need. To, I, I completely forgot. I wanted to continue turning this down after after. Um, I turned that music way up for the for the for the uh, deal, and I meant to turn it back down earlier. <laughs> Holy shit, huh? <laughs> I let that go for a while. Um. Either way, uh, Justice Legion. Uh, talking to Foley about that it has not fallen on deaf ears Foley has noticed that he is uh, starting to lose people here on breakout and he does not want to have uh, any uh, roster any more roster losses for breakout he wants to create the best possible show and if he's losing most of his people then there's not really if he doesn't have a roster he doesn't have a show so uh, he sets up a match at revolution he says well, I'll book one final match for revolution and um, we'll help you try to get that that gauntlet back. So it is actually going to be a tag team ladder match. And it will be, if I make it happen, the Evil League of Evil versus the Justice Legion in a tag team ladder match. Destiny and Mary Dobson of Awful Chemistry. Uh-oh. Looks like I'm just going to ignore it. Evil League of Evil versus the Justice Legion in a ladder match hanging high above the ring. Let me see here. Ladder match. Ladder match. And it will be for possession 
of the gauntlet. Hanging high above the ring will be the gauntlet itself. And uh, the Evil League of Evil will have to give that up and hang it from the ring and put it on the line against the Justice Legion uh, for their attempt to, uh, to, to bring the gauntlet to the right side and uh, keep it away from the hands of the Evil League of Evil. So we have Evil League of Evil versus Justice Legion in a ladder match. Possession of the gauntlet on the line. And I think... We are good there. Leva Bates and the rest of Leva Corp are out. They have a six-man tag match. Leva, uh, Leva is uh, basically talking about uh, the fact that okay, she's going to face Kana. She seems to be uh, she seems to be pretty good. Although she she kind of needs a tune up. It's been a little bit since she's uh, you know she just recovered from the, the the injury that she had against Kana. You know she was just at a back and neck brace last week. Uh, but magically recovered, and uh, just needs a little bit of a tune-up before uh, before she faces Khan at Revolution. She plans to challenge Io Shirai at Final Fight in December for the women's title, which, of course, the winner of this match will challenge Io, and assumedly, of course, at Final Fight. So she's looking forward to it. She just needs to get the knock the ring rust off, although I think it's only been like a month. It's not even been a month. It's been like four weeks. <laughs> Decent enough match, I'd say. Everyone did pretty okay. Athena, Leva Bates, uh, Madison Eagles did great. Even Kaylee Ray got a 66. That's pretty good. But uh, Leva Corp getting the win over Kaylee Ray and Shimmer and Shine in a decent enough match. Leva Bates getting the win, of course. Uh, getting the pinfall after critical confirmation on Kaylee Ray. Uh, towards the end of the match, uh, Shimmer and Shine just decided to uh, walk away. Uh, after a while, they're like, "You know what? We don't need this. We don't. We don't need to be dealing with this. We got other stuff to worry about." So they give not a care in the world for Kaylee Ray, who just lost her tag team partner last week, uh, getting crapped on by Leva Corp, and uh, taking the loss in this match to help Leva Corp get the victory. And uh, we have the Heyman Hit Squad coming out with Paul Heyman himself and uh, talks up the fact that this Saturday will be Miyu Yamashita's first Hawkeye Pro pay-per-view match. It'll be a singles match, and what a competitor she'll be facing in Dash Chisako and uh, talks up the fact that, she, you know, he'll be facing, she'll be facing a former women's champion and uh, potentially beating a former women's champion. In fact, the longest reigning currently women's champion. Uh, of course, until uh, EO potentially beats her out for it. Um, but either way, Paul Heyman uh, letting that uh, letting that up there. And, uh, you know, plans on managing yet another champion in the future when uh, EO Shirai decides to hang it up. Uh, you know, perhaps in 15 years or so, Miu will be able to be women's champion. And, uh, but other than that, planning on upset of the decade with Miu beating Dash. We go to the back, not even to the back, just to an undisclosed location, wherever the Justice Legion's lair is. The blue dot is still there. And, uh, he has, uh, walked his way back into this secret room that we saw last week. And, uh. He, he uh, looks again at what he has in the hidden room, and uh, it, it, it looks like uh, we're not sure what it is that he's looking at. We're just kind of seeing his face and then, like, a light glow, and uh, he seems to be reaching for something and uh, seems to, to grab it, and uh, we still don't quite know what he, what he uh, has but he is uh, grabbing something, and you know, in the in the dire situation that the Justice Legion might be in, with that gauntlet, uh, perhaps the Blue Dot has grabbed something to help out with this situation. Revolution are coming out. Uh, they discussed the way they won last week, and uh, you know, they realized that they had cheated. Uh, they said they looked back at the tape from last week and realized that they had actually cheated to win. 
they couldn't believe they actually did that. You know, they wanted to. They came out here to apologize to the fans, say this isn't what they deserve, saying they deserve better from these three women. They, you know, were 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 top women uh, in uh, companies. They know what it means uh, to be, and they don't want that uh, continuing that continuing trend. So uh, they're going to. Sorry. They're going to uh, continue. Oh, Mike is fucking up. Damn it. I had a feeling. All right. I had a feeling because it looked like it was going haywire on the uh, on the on the screen because I was like looking at my uh, my my um, thing and I was like I was trying to like maybe leave enough of a gap to see what happened. And I'm like, okay, that looks like there's too much noise going on. Okay, so either way, Revolution came out to apologize. They say, um, you know, the audience deserves better, and they don't want to do that again. You know, they want a good, clean win and uh, are going to get their opportunity to show that against the new uh, tag team champions. And uh, good enough match between them. Look at that, 81, I'll take it. Uh, no one like exemplary, really. Hamada's kind of getting there. I can only imagine if she's getting a seventy-four now. Imagine what she can get if we can get her up in the popularity. <sighs> yeah, I, I understand. I was actually about to pull it. I was actually about to like mute the microphone and pull the cord out because I'm like, this looks weird. But I was giving it like a few extra seconds to see. And that's what happens because I was kind of messing with the microphone a little bit, so now it seems to be seems to be fine. Uh, but either way, uh, Revolution once again blatantly cheating. Uh, you know, maybe uh, put the foot on the rope to uh, to get the win and some sort of roll up. Uh, Becky Knox pinning Ayaka Hamada with that. Oh, it disarm her. Oh shit. Uh, well, she beat her by submission. What what would they do? What would they have? What would they have done? A chair shot to the arm? Maybe that. You know what? Maybe Ashley Flair, the, distracting the referee. One of them grabs like a kendo stick or something, smacks him, and there you go. Smacks him with the deal in the arm. Like imagine, I'm imagining Ashley Flair on one side of the ring, distracting the ref. Uh, Knight digging underneath the ring, grabs a kendo stick. Becky Knox whips Hamada into the ropes. Knight hits her with the stick. That hits her right in the arm. That's going to hurt. And then Becky right into the disarmer. I figured that would probably be the best way to have that, have that happen. So quick, short, quick to the point with the cheating. And, uh, you know, Reynas are none too happy about that, of course. You know, especially after the speech of the revolution just gave about the cheating and uh, they seem to be mentioning that as the revolution are um, are uh, backing away to the uh, to to the back, and uh, they seem oblivious to the fact that they were doing uh, that they were doing some cheating, and uh, so they they're completely oblivious. They're like what you know, I don't remember doing any sort of cheating. Do you remember do cheating? No. Okay. Uh, we're just we're just gonna go ahead and not believe you, as they head to the back. <laughs> I need to fire up this one. I got done with I got done with my 2K playlist. Now I got my other playlist for this. And so there you go. To the back. Uh, to the back again, actually. To the back goes the revolution, as do the cameras. Dash and Kyrie are backstage. They don't want to come out to the ring, but they're cutting themselves a promo. Maybe it's more a vignette. Maybe they're not like backstage, backstage. But um, yeah. Uh, doing pulling some sort of vignette and uh, talking about the the Heyman hit squad and the fact that they're gonna they're gonna get like their hands one of them at least with Dash is gonna get their hands on Miu, but uh, they still are absolutely planning on uh, unmasking the other two and uh, taking away their uh, secret identity abilities by uh, making sure that they have to continue that they have to continue unmasked uh we get james mitchell out with kana 
Uh, Hikaru Shida is already out for her match in this main event against Kana. James Mitchell talking up. Uh, Hikaru Shida says, okay, she's a great competitor, and uh, it's a shame that this has to happen. You know, he considers Hikaru Shida a possible contender for the title. And, uh, you know, but uh, wants to give Kana a warm up to, uh, to to face Leva Bates. And there's not a whole lot of people on this show anymore that James Mitchell feels that he can trust to give Kana a good match without uh, potentially trying to injure her. So uh, he books Hikaru Shida for this for this match. Yes. That's what I want to see. I want to see Hikaru Shida pulling her goddamn weight and showing me that she is fucking worth it. Ah. Cool. Hikaru Shida versus Kana does well. In just under 20 minutes, Kana ends up pinning, uh, pinning her, submitting her with the Kana lock. Superb wrestling. Does extremely well. 91. One of the best matches we've had. Uh, I think that's a top five women's match right there. Uh, so there you go. Hikaru Shida losing on the losing end, but putting up a good fight against Kana, showing that she still is uh, a top level competitor, even if she's not really recognized as such right now. All right. I, I like that. I like that 83. That tells me that tells me a lot. <laughs> and that 91 is solid. So Kana getting the win in the main event, and with that comes Leva Bates. Kana hasn't even recovered yet. She still has the Kana lock in. She's uh, she kind of went through like a, a kind of a rough match. Maybe not rough, but like, um, yeah, maybe not like rough, but sort of like uh, it's been a competitive match. So uh, yeah, she's kind of uh, talking to James Mitchell. She's recovering. Leva Bates' music hits. Kana just is still kind of recovering. Uh, doesn't really pay much attention. And just as Leva Bates looks like maybe she's going to, uh, you know, talk, Io Shirai in her gimmick comes out and uh, just lays out Leva Bates. And, uh, you know, James Mitchell now has a panic look on his face and is trying to get Kana to turn around and deal with a fresh Io Shirai that hasn't had to deal with a high-level match. But uh, as as she's starting to turn around and recover, uh, Io's already there and is uh, beating her down and laying her out as well with uh, Paul Heyman coming out. You know, it seems like he's kind of sort of trying to uh, kind of sort of trying to, uh, to to stop her, but isn't really going too much into trying to make that happen. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Io Shirai stands over, kind of stands tall over the both of them going into this, kind of making them look iffy, but I think it's a good enough. I think it's a, a good enough ending there. Oh. All right. Let me see. Let me see here. Emails. Juice Robinson is now a middleweight because his muscle mass is built up. Oh, shit. We ain't doing no junior heavyweight juice. I, I hope Juice isn't on the juice. He's a muscular middleweight. Are we going to give him the Steiner screwdriver now? <laughs> what is this? Oh, yeah. Pulp Friction. That's what it is. Juice Robinson. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen when that came out. Just as soon as that came out. <laughs> juice is juiced. Oh, boy. Or juice is juiced. <laughs> Ranting on Noah. Okay. Trying to see if there's anything else I want to do. Doesn't really look like it. Muscular Juice Robinson is always an interesting, interesting story. Oh! Oh! There was a story I didn't look into. That's right. She did get signed by she did get signed by NWA. Man, there is no reason to sign Nikki Bella. But I kind of want to do it and not like not like put her in a man, I can't even have her. I can't have her do shit. I can't have her do anything. Like, dude, her safety, her safety is even worse than Ladybeard when he broke Kushida's neck. He's got, sh she's got shit tier stats. 
her psychology's awful. Her stamina's awful. She's not a good talker. There's no reason to sign Nikki Bella. New NXT team. Dorothy Goodridge and Peyton Royce. They're the lost souls. Oh! That's a fun idea. Oh, that's a great idea. I want to, but instead of the lost souls, oh my god, now I want to do, now I want to do a, a vampire gimmick. Oh, that gave me a good idea of doing like the lost boys. That'd be a fun idea. Just get two guys to do a vampire gimmick and just do a lost boys gimmick. They could be called the lost souls as well. Why not? Maybe that's maybe that's what I'm gonna do with Los and Gobernables now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why. I, I, yeah, she's injured, but they're still putting in a new tag team. Either way, 220. So it's not as bad, but still, meh. Uh, but there you go. Uh, I still have the pay per view to do tomorrow night, and I will do that. And I yes, I see drug test. I'll do drug test after event. That's what I'm doing. That's when I do them. Is generally after the event. Um, but yeah, either way, uh, that'll be it for the YouTube video for this because I'm trying to separate them now. Because otherwise, if I do the week and the pay per view, it's like a four hour long video and no one needs that. So uh, yeah, I'll have the pay per view here for you guys uh, for you guys on stream. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Those were the go home shows. Uh, you know, I don't think they were the greatest, but, you know, experimental. I think that's the best way to do it. Experimental. It's a B pay-per-view. Who really? I don't really need to care that much. <laughs> uh, but there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to end the video now. So I'll see you for Revolution at the end of the week.